there. Okay, uh, so this is key area three of unit three of human biology. Um, so we're currently on the neurobiology and immunology unit. This key area is about memory, and we're going to be starting with a little section of memory about how memories are created or creation. Okay, so in terms of stuff that you learned about NAT5, you learned about the idea of, well, when it was at NAT5, it was the cerebrum, but now we're at higher, it's known as the cerebral cortex. And we learned that that's the part of the brain that's actually responsible for memories and dealing with memories and thoughts and personality and all those kind of things. OK, so um, let's think about memory. It's memory is a tough one. It is a really loose thing for us, because if you think about memory, memory is you as well. Um, so we're going to try and quantify it as best we can in this area. Memory is your ability to store information. It's your brain's ability to do that. It will be storing information even that you might not be consciously processing um, so this could be past experiences thoughts sensory information so stuff that you feel um, or knowledge okay it requires three components in order to be successfully created it needs to be encoded successfully it needs to be stored and it needs to be able to be retrieved so the first thing that happens is it needs to be encoded so basically to make a memory actually a proper functional memory that you can take back and actually retrieve the sensory information needs to be encoded uh, into information that can actually be stored in the brain. So basically it's not instantly able to just be stored. It needs to be encoded in a special way so your brain can actually use it effectively. I'm saying, but it's got to be in a different format because if you remember how something tastes, you don't literally taste it again. So it's not exactly the same format that it went into your body in. It's in a different form. Uh, storage, it could be long or short term. The next video is on short term memory and the one after that is on long term memory. Uh, long term memory is subject to change depending on the nature of the memory. We don't really understand a huge amount about long term memory in total, uh, but it can change. Basically, stuff can be deleted. Uh, stuff can be either irretrievable. We just can't access it. So it may as well be deleted. Um, and if we knew how long term memory worked, we'd find things like learning an awful lot more easy. It, the final thing that needs to happen is it needs to be able to be retrieved. So obviously for it to be a memory, it needs to be something that you can actually bring back and remember. If it's not there, if it's, there's no use in it. There's no point in having it as a memory. So it needs to be accessible so you can actually remember that. Um, and short term memories and long term memories both have this ability to be retrieved because obviously you remember them. And that's kind of the whole point. It's quite kind of straightforward. Is mm -hmm. If you can't remember it, it's not a memory. Yeah, it needs to be in a form that it can be stored in your brain. It needs to be able to be uh, stored and then you need to be able to get it again. Quite often memories that are not used will become deleted or more and more difficult to retrieve. Again, we're not sure if they're actually erased or if they're just unretrievable. It's impossible to tell. Like Bing Bong and Inside Out, which oh. is a devastating, <laughs> devastating story. So that's uh, essentially it in terms of creation of memory. So memory has to be encoded uh, in order to convert sensory information into a form that can be stored. It has to be able to be stored in the storage of information. So we have to be able to store information so we can actually access it. And then you need to actually be able to retrieve it in the, in the first place. OK, so that's essentially creation. Our next section will be on short term memory. See you then.